Hello, hello, hello. Okay, this is take two. Uh, so today uh, we are going to be talking about setting up subdomains uh, in your Reclaim hosting account. I'm looking at your Reclaim hosting because I am assuming that is what all of you have used for your uh, websites for uh, the Incom Studies uh, major. So if you can go to reclaimhosting.com and then go to the client login area and enter your login info Let's see if this works no <laughs> i just been testing this out all right okay so uh what we want to do here is we want to then go to the once we're logged in we'll go to the control panel and uh, I want to show you uh, first the uh, file manager. Uh, the file manager is where you are able to see the root of your uh, domain and the files that exist within it. Uh, if you go to public.html, anything that is in here, this is essentially the WordPress installation that you have here. You might have other things that you've stored, but you can create other folders and things to have accessible uh, to the public. Um, we could talk about all this at some point, but it's, I just wanted to show you uh, what this uh, looks like. So we're going to be creating a subdomain. A subdomain is a, a space that allows for additional installations and also that can then uh, be displayed within the uh, domain uh, of, your, of your site, but very, very simply. Uh, so if you can scroll down and click on subdomains, and here you just want to create a subdomain. So I'm going to create one. Uh, DIGS16 hashtag and uh, that's the root, the, that's the domain. You want to keep that the way it is. There's no other domains. You might have multiple ones. Uh, your subdomain should be something meaningful and connected to the purpose of your investigation. So please do not create this until you uh, know what your investigation topic is going to be. Okay, then click create. Take a second. Do so. Very exciting success. Woohoo! We got to create it. Then we can go back. And then we want to go back to the, and now we see it actually down here, uh, the subdomain uh, listed right over here. Uh, we now want to go back to our control panel. And you can scroll down to web applications and WordPress. And you now want to install this application. And you can click the button. Now you're saying to yourself, I already have WordPress on my site. What am I doing here? So what you're going to do is under domain, you are going to now select the subdomain. And you will see it as whatever you named it dot, whatever your domain name is, and you just select it that way. And you can have a directory optional. I'm just going to keep it like this. Uh, I, I recommend deleting the blog so that, so the website that you will send people to if they're interested in your the investigation you're doing will be this and there's no blog sort of at the end of it. Um, accept the license agreement, update to any new version, update plugins as they become available uh, if you want to. Now uh, for your administrator name, this is all randomly selected, and this is important to actually do, so please make sure you change this. I would change it to uh, something meaningful. Admin is, is kind of bland, uh, and I would change it to something that you are going to um, remember, and also that will help the, the, view, the, the readers of your, of your blog or website know who is posting. And then I would change this to something that is going to be useful and that you're going to remember as well. Okay, uh, email, and now the title and the tagline. You can choose this now, or you can wait until later, obviously, and change these things. But you might say, and I'm just going to call it my, you know, uh, Name it something blogging, writing, tweeting, researching, blah, blah, blah. 
you you create something meaningful that will help your readers understand what it is you're doing with your investigation. Um, limit these things, not enable multi-site, no. Okay. And then you'll click install. So again, you want to make sure that you've got it set to this subdomain and you want to make sure you have a username that you've created, a password that you have, your email is there, a title, and then a tagline. These can always be changed uh, later on. Then click install. And you'll see it's processing, copying files, tables. This takes a few seconds. And you can see now it looks like it might be working on this one, but here is the, the subdomain. Okay. Um, now, if we go back to here, uh, this tab that I had opened, this, this, uh, the file manager, and you click refresh, you will now see that this subdomain exists and inside of it is another WordPress installation. So anytime you now log into this WordPress uh, installation, you are not logging into your main one, you're logging into this one. You can make all sorts of changes and all sorts of different things that will then be uh, different from your regular site. And this is a way for you to, to uh, distinguish between uh, maybe your WordPress uh, professional site blog that you're updating and then this other individual project uh, blog. So now I can go to uh, this domain, new tab, and there it is. This is my, my awesome site. And I can then, if I want to, WP admin, I will log in. And I can do all the things that I need to be able to do here. I can update my about page under pages. I can change my appearance themes. I want to choose something that is going to be uh, useful for, for me. I can add new theme. Um, you know, I can just, just install that so you can see that, that it's there. Activate it. This is the site. Now here it is right here. Okay. Um, so now, really quite easy. This shouldn't take very long to do. Uh, just a couple of steps, and uh, then you've got it installed. Okay. Uh, if you have any questions, let me know. See you later.